Good morning, good afternoon. This is Monica Paolini with Sensopili, and uh, our conversation today is uh, on CBRS. And uh, uh, CBRS allows uh, uh, licensed and unlicensed use within a shared spectrum um, platform in, in the US using the 3.5 gigahertz band. And um, uh, what we're gonna talk about is how the enterprise will uh, uh, use uh, uh, CBRS. And today I'm talking to uh, Marco Babovic. He's the head of product line uh, for street and indoor uh, and the product area networks at Ericsson. Uh, Marco, thank, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. And Marco, can you tell us what you do at Ericsson uh, um, with respect to uh, CBRS and uh, small cells? So uh, I'm, I'm responsible for the solutions that, uh, that we build for, for the environments that are uh, for indoor systems and, uh, and outdoor small cells uh, systems as well, basically on, uh, base, based on the RAN technologies we, we apply. So uh, the RAN technologies is the same technology that we apply for for many other products that we have, and then we replicate it and, uh, and use it as a baseline for my products. Uh, so, uh, Ericsson, you know, uh, you've been obviously working with operators uh, for a very, very long time. Um, yes. uh, how about uh, uh, the enterprise? Uh, are you working with the enterprise too, with the uh, small cells? So, uh, yes, our our customer base is as, exactly as you said, uh, um, uh, big vendors or smaller vendor uh, sm operators. Sorry. Carriers uh, uh, that uh, that are that are trusting us and uh, and giving us the task to provide the, the the solutions for many many years or decades even in some cases. Uh, so when we when we think about CBRS, we are absolutely working with them uh, first of all for their needs, uh, but also we are working towards the enterprises uh, or system integrators or whoever is coming as a new player in the field through the, the same operators that I'm to, uh, I mentioned, but also directly. Absolutely. Now, in terms of uh, CBRS, uh, what's the difference between a small cell that uses CBRS versus a small cell in the license spectrum? So it's a good question. It's, a, it's actually not so different. Uh, so for us, uh, we, uh, we have decided to reuse the, the same technology that we apply for what we call macro macro networks even for indoor and uh, small cells. And then uh, adding a CBRS for the, for the radio access network is, I will simplify it a little bit, but it's, it's just another frequency. So it's, uh, it's another frequency that we apply on the radio on the one component of our si solution. And then that frequency, uh, the new thing is that uh, how this frequency is managed, how this frequency is decided that is then uh, going to the, to the SCS system outside, the, uh, which, is a, which is a different from from our current networks. Yeah, absolutely. So who do you think uh, will be deploying uh, CBRS in the US? So first of all, um, the deployment will really start from the operators, the, the carriers. They, uh, we, for example, work very tightly with Verizon on, on, uh, on, their, on their needs. And uh, um, the, the need that we see at the, from the operator is uh, to, to increase the capacities of their systems. Uh, uh, both outdoor and, uh, and indoor, and the capacities without really spending uh, in uh, a lot of uh, uh, investments uh, in, uh, in acquiring frequency spectrum. So this is number one. Then the second, the, the second uh, thing that will come are the new players, as I said. The new players are coming. Uh, they are very creative. There are many, <laughs> uh, but uh, they are still all, most of them are in the exploratory phase. So in the exploratory phase, they try uh, uh, what does it mean really to run a network? What does it mean to, uh, to have a radio access network with 3GPP? How do I handle this? How do... So those, those players are, are the, the, the second part of the, of the uh, potential users of CBRS. And then the, the third one is um, back to the operators, I think. Uh, uh, when the operators start realizing that the CBRS as a neutral host technology uh, is actually allowing them to, to actually, it's much easier for them to start sharing uh, uh, their uh, their solutions between each other if uh, they don't need to chip in with their frequency. So by having a CBRS as a as a as a as an option will actually allow a better multi operator systems and solutions in the future. Right. No. And that's and we're gonna go back to the to the different business models because they could be you know different types of business models in the same. Uh, uh, type of venue. Uh, but let's step back for a second and let's talk about use cases. Clearly, 
there is a use case you just have you know basically the access you know users with the um, with their phones or laptops um, are there other use cases for CBRS that you're seeing right now so the use cases for CBRS are um, you can divide them into this exploratory and and uh, what is really driving CBRS uh, first what is driving first is pretty much normal uh, mobile broadband uh, services that uh, as I said like higher capacity uh, um, is, is the main drive but then the, the the options are unlimited if you want uh, when it comes to usage of uh, for for uh, IOT for uh, private LTE for many use cases are, are are existing they're all there the technology is there uh, we have solutions that can satisfy most of them the question is really how the business models are are worked through who is driving them and uh, how fast will they will will they appear but there are very many many use cases and i'm sure you know even more than i do about them so, so do you think however that is going to be initially for basic broadband access and then all this uh, iot and uh, specific services or the other way around um, uh, once again can you repeat the question so, so you think that the, the, the initial CBRS deployments will be aimed at uh, uh, specific vertical ap uh, applications and IoT, or is it going to be more for uh, uh, ac uh, data access, broadband access? I think uh, the, the, the latter. Uh, so so the, the, the mobile broadband, as I call it, is the, is the primary use case. So the capacity increase is, is then a, a, an obvious choice, as I said before. Uh, um, and then... There will be a use case where, where, um, where. Um, uh, so what, what, what you're, what you're talking about is uh, maybe uh, uh, like IoT use cases, something that is um, going to help some uh, creation of a new type of behavior of uh, end users or machines. So that's that's there, and that's in the exploratory phase. But there is another exploratory phase as well, which is that. Um, the enterprises may not be happy with their with their current uh, 3GPP coverage or, or seller uh, seller uh, general mobile broadband, and they may actually drive the the use cases for not only for increasing capacity but for increasing the coverage without waiting uh, the big uh, carriers to provide right. through, through smaller carriers or themselves. Mm -hmm. Right now, if we look at it from from the enterprise point of view, um, however, and uh, um, there are, there are different, they have different choices. Uh, they have Wi-Fi. They can use CBRS. Uh, they can use Multifire, or they can use uh, uh, unlicensed uh, um, uh, LTE with LAA. Um, how do you see that the choices being made among among these different technologies? Well, that's a brilliant question because uh, uh, not, uh, I mean, there are so few people that can answer uh, uh, exactly on that, on your question, and I have not met any yet. Uh, so, uh, but I can tell you what, what we believe. So, uh, what we believe is that the, 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 the 3GPP technology is providing, if you compare it to Wi-Fi, uh, for example, of course, you can make a Wi-Fi with a, with a performance that is uh, with the uh, 11AX and uh, with, the, with coming technology steps, you can provide better performance, better capacity. Of course, you can do that. But what is very essential for 3GPP is the, the management of the system, which is, which is uh, almost seamless for, for, uh, for um, uh, an enterprise or, or a, biz, a building owner or, or whoever or a tower company. Uh, the managing of the, of the whole system is, is seamless. That's one thing. The second thing is that the robustness and especially uh, the security aspect of the robustness is uh, is exclusive for 3GPP. So wherever you have, so what I can see is that uh, the choices that will be made in the in the future will be based on the combination. There will be Wi-Fi and 3GPP uh, technologies as well, but the 3GPP will always come with the with this uh, advantage of having uh, excellent security. And we we live in those uh, those times where security is more and more important. We see quite a lot of breaches, and the breaches are going to continue. So security will be super important, even more important than before. The robustness of the system and easy, uh, seamless management of the whole network will be, uh, will be on one side. And because of that, 3GPP will, will exist everywhere. Wi-Fi, I believe, will exist in a, in a I, would, I would say, a best effort providing a basic coverage, a basic, uh, basic best effort, high capacity as well, but on, on a different premise. 
so so you see that the thing that they will both coexist now from from an enterprise point of view um do you see the enterprise uh, well how active do you think that the enterprise is going to be in deploying the the cbrs infrastructure and by in enterprise you mean what exactly can you well both enterprise uh, like uh you know companies, but also venue owners and uh, uh, entities like hospitals, colleges, every, every, basically every, every situation where you do have control over the real estate and then you can deploy a network as, a, as an owner, right. entity that controls it. So there will be several options to choose. And, uh, as uh, we are still early in the, in the phase of uh, uh, building business models around the technology that is almost uh, aligned uh, with, uh, with the agreeing on the latest CBRS uh, policies. I think in US, we are pretty safe when it comes to technology, but the business models are, are going to answer to your question and the business models will be uh, various. So, so um, there will be, there will be uh, options for, as I said, the enterprises that are not happy with their seller coverage, assuming that there is a good enough uh, uh, terminal penetration uh, or with the uh, CBRS capable phones, they will actually start uh, uh, thinking if they are very large enterprises, they will start to think about how about owning our own system? What does it mean for us to own a system? And then some of them will decide to go that path and then uh, uh, with their IT, IT uh, technicians to actually build such a system uh, with, the, with the same components that the, the big operators have. Some of them will, uh, even uh, like smaller enterprises will, will choose to to go that path, but not really to build their own system. So they will ask for these new players that I'm talking about. They will, they will search for new players. The new players will be system integrators, tower companies that will actually come as, a, as another wave of, uh, I would say, smaller uh, carriers that are, specif that are specifically addressing uh, the enterprise need. So that kind of um, ecosystem uh, will be built. And it's very hard to say which one will be built first and, uh, and how fast. Right, and, and if, if the enterprise deploys their own network, either uh, in, independently or with a neutral host, uh, what type of relationship do you see my, they might have uh, with mobile operators? So, um, um, so I think the easiest one, the easiest business model that you can find is a, is a, is a roaming agreement. So, so if an enterprise build an, uh, a network alone or with the help of a new player, uh, that will, there will be a, 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 a roaming agreement between, between, they will offer a roaming agreement uh, with, uh, with, other, with the carriers. And the carriers may decide to go with it or not. That's yeah. the easiest one. Yeah, and, and I guess from your point of view as a vendor, you can support all of them. Uh, it's just a question. It's, it's, a, it's a business model um, uh, agreement. So let, let's talk a little bit about what, what is your, your solution? What, what is that you offer to the enterprise? So, um, what, uh, as I said, we, uh, for us, we are, we are reusing everything that we are doing for, for the macro, uh, for the big macro 4G and 5G uh, system that we build. And uh, what we do it differently is, uh, is, the, is the, the last mile, the last path towards the, what we call a radio. So here I have actually, um, I can show you, I don't know if you can see. So this one, this little fellow is, uh, is, the, is what we call a dot. Uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a CBRS dot, uh, so which means that uh, it, it is two times forty megahertz. Uh, uh, so pretty much it gives you six hundred megabit per second and at one access point with with a uh, with I don't know two thousand users. So so it's kind of uh, it's the like the most compressed uh, and what is specific with this one is not in, uh, there is nothing specific with CBRS version of that one except the frequencies. But what is specific towards uh, maybe other solution is that this is super easy to install. The, the, the business cases that we talked about before are, uh, take like um, the, the idea of an uh, enterprise uh, uh, building their own system or a tower company. This is super easy to build. This is super easy to design and, and build. And that's, that's why we are, we're, we're striving to, to get the, the easiest possible uh, system. So basically, when, when you put this in, in, the, in the ceiling, as an example, you can move it like two meters or left and right or five meters. It will not change the performance. The performance is robust. Design is absolutely easy. And there is no optimization after that. So this kind of uh, uh, excellent plug and play with low OPEX uh, for, for the, whoever is building the system will be essential for, for absolutely the CBRS uh, uh, in building solutions. So, so that's one thing. Yeah. 
So that's one thing. And then uh, I prepared for this interview. So I, I, I actually, so this one, I actually, I can hold this one in my hand as well. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, but that's the outdoor uh, uh, solution. That's the, that, that's the outdoor small cells uh, uh, 2208 micro radio, which is, uh, which is uh, providing the maximum power that you can put uh, in, in US today. So both of those uh, uh, solutions are in the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the the indoor. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty small. It's uh, you know, it's smaller almost than, than a Wi-Fi access point. Uh, so, is it from an enterprise point of view? Is it how is that different from installing a, a Wi-Fi access point? I think it's a uh, uh, very different uh, from from the perspective of um, um, <clears throat> uh, the installation. The design is is pretty much same. So the design is uh, is the same. The choice of uh, um, uh, of solutions is maybe restricted, more restricted to Wi-Fi. You have a, a number of very relevant uh, vendors in Wi-Fi, but in in 3GPP it's a little bit different. We uh, uh, it's not it's not easy to find too many vendors that can provide this uh, this kind of system that is this small and uh, comparable with Wi-Fi uh, uh, from that perspective. But the the real difference between Wi-Fi and 3GPP is the operations of the Wi-Fi and 3GPP. The operations of 3GPP uh, uh, cells is is very, as I said, seamless, handled by someone else, like in the cloud, uh, uh, by a carrier, by a, a tower company, or whoever else will come in here, while the Wi-Fi doesn't necessarily need to be there. So the Wi-Fi, so for the Wi-Fi inst installations, you normally have an IT technician and a, and a, and a CIO of an enterprise is actually uh, uh, very responsible for managing this network. And, and those networks can be complex, uh, less complex, more complex. It's, it's, a, it's much more work with Wi-Fi for an enterprise than with 3GPP. Yeah, and so what, the, the dot, what, the, what do you use for, uh, for the backhaul? So the dot, uh, so the dot this one is, um, is just, uh, you, you have a CAT cable, uh, Ethernet cable uh, to, the, to the central place, and then there you have some equipment. It's, uh, it's like this. <laughs> Uh, and then after that, you, you use a backhaul the, towards the core network. That's a typical solution. Uh, there are other solutions, but this is a typical solution. And the backhaul can be either uh, internet grade, uh, untrusted backhaul, or it can be uh, um, a, like provided, a backhaul provided by a carrier. So both, both options are, are there. So now in, uh, in a lot of larger enterprises, you might have a DAS system already. And uh, for those, uh, Mm, enterprises, uh, what is the advantage of moving from DAS to CBRS or uh, in, more generally, uh, you know, a small cell deployment? Well, clearly they don't want to throw away their DAS, but what is, what is the upgrade path and how do they want to go from uh, to add one or to increase the capacity of the DAS? So I love DAS. I loved, I always loved DAS because that was a, that was a fantastic system build uh, years ago that worked very well for many, many years, providing one thing that is uh, architecturally unique, and that's the, the neutrality of, uh, of the solution. Neutral host is, uh, is, uh, is inbuilt in the architecture of DAS. So that's, uh, that's the good side of that. However, DAS has, has um, limitations, and uh, because of the DAS limitations, in terms of uh, future proofness, going to 5G, adding uh, uh, another layer, two by two, four by four, uh, beam forming, et cetera, et cetera, because of those 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 parts, we have we have designed our own system, which is the dot. Uh, so, having said that, then you have to come back to the DAS. But what is the relevancy of the DAS uh, uh, today? What will happen with the DAS? And I think that the DAS is uh, is relevant because uh, of the multi operator. So, wherever you you need uh, not too much cover, uh, not too much capacity, the DAS systems will be still relevant for for years. So, like coverage. Uh, uh, or neutral, like neutral host providing to several operators, simple coverage with a not so so advanced capacity uh, will be will be uh, will be good for 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 the DAS. Then talking with about DAS is not is impossible to to do if you don't talk about multi-operator solutions. So multi-operator solutions that we have, uh, for example, with the with the dot, are are based on uh, having either multiple dots in the ceiling sharing the infrastructure. You can have also one dot serving several operators with different uh, different uh, vendors beneath. So those those options are all uh, attractive from the from the TCO point of view, I would say, especially in US. 
but they do require some kind of coordination between operators when it comes to the how do you design, how do you build, and how do you deploy. And then coming with CBRS, as I mentioned at the beginning, CBRS will offer something different because CBRS will offer something that is being not so popular with the license bands. Uh, and, uh, and that's the MO run and MOCN options like multi-operator run and multi-operator CN where, where you basically have one radio access network coupled simultaneously to different core networks of different, uh, uh, of different uh, operators or carriers. So that solution is being attractive for some geographies, like in Canada you have some, in Europe you have some, but not in US as an example. Having CBRS now coming in will reopen that, that book. So CBRS will actually be the, the, uh, uh, the, the enabler for restarting the discussions about sharing the networks even, even harder. Then if you start comparing the, the coverage solutions and the TCO of a coverage solutions for multiple operators with CBRS, with MOCN or MORAN on the coverage level, then it, that will not have any place there. This will be much simpler and much faster and much cheaper. Absolutely. But now the one thing and that, you know, I agree that in the US, the, the, the spectrum sharing or the infrastructure sharing, it's a little bit more, seems to be more difficult than in other markets. And hopefully CBRS will change that. Um, but uh, operators are often worried that if they share something, they cannot control the user experience. How do you address that, that issue? Yeah, I think that that's, uh, that's, the, that's the key question. This is the key question for sharing the, the, the spectrum. How, uh, I have met many, many operators and, and you know, I, I, I more hear about uh, expressions of, uh, you know, I would share my baseband over my dead body. I, I have uh, much more often this kind of reaction on the question than, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's make it uh, uh, cheaper. <laughs> so, so, and exactly because of what you say, the control, the control of, um, because if you're a carrier, you're responsible for uh, end user performance. If you're responsible for end user performance, you have to have control mechanisms all the way. You have to do that. So even the DAS system today is, yeah, it's not really giving the full control for operators because you have this port from, from uh, the head end until the, the antenna that is not really controlled by any operator. So that makes a little bit difficult for them to accept this control. For having, for example, the, the dots, like uh, uh, if you have, like this one can be a multi-operator dot with, uh, with two completely independent uh, operators using, accessing half and half, as an example. I'll just give you an example. Electrically, half, half, two operators. They, those operators will not see each other from their O&M systems all the way to antenna. And they will have a full control until the very last piece of the antenna. And that's the, 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 the most important part uh, 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 to address when it comes to the new systems uh, based on, a, on, a, on a, uh, indoor small cells. With the CBRS, that's another question. Then the CBRS will, uh, will actually, as I said before, allow MORAN options and MOC and options. And then we as a vendors, uh, 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 we as a vendor, we have to provide uh, even better slicing of, of domains for different operators within the baseband. We have to provide them guarantees that this part will not see the other part. We have to provide them the, the O&M ways all the way through the, to, the, to the dots. That's, that will be our uh, uh, task to, to fulfill. And we are ready for it. No, that's, uh, that's uh, great to hear. And uh, not to, to close this, um, if we look at uh, CBRS, and well, uh, okay, if you actually look at uh, small cells, they've been around for a long time, but uh, especially in, in the US, especially if you compare it to Asia, um, the deployment of uh, both small cells and indoor infrastructure have been, has been slower than we initially expected. Uh, do you think that CBRS will change it? And do you think that it will change, you know, you mentioned it, something in, along those lines before, and why now? Um, what, what, what's, what's changing? Um, it's, a, it's one of the million dollar questions, uh, um, uh, actually. What, what, how will indoor small cells accelerate in US? That's, uh, that's uh, the question. And then will the CBRS contribute uh, to that, uh, that uh, increase of speed? Absolutely, CBRS will, 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 will contribute, uh, allowing many actors to start thinking about indoor small cells in a different way. Uh, but CBRS will be just one of the tools uh, to accelerate that. Uh, 
essentially what uh, what you have in us is a uh, is still a very very deeply uh, inbuilt uh, strong ecosystem of uh, of uh, das suppliers you know so you have vendors uh, uh, local engineers uh, suppliers carriers that are all fitting in one ecosystem that works very well and that that ecosystem is um, is preventing a little bit the 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 uh, to rethink and uh, to focus on indoor small cells, which you don't have in China. In China, you have you have a different story, and that's that's where the indoor small cells are uh, really. Having CBRS will actually help a little bit, but I don't think that this will be the the biggest accelerator for for indoor small cells in US. It will contribute, but it will not be the biggest. So, what will be the biggest? Or there isn't any. There's just going to be less small cells than uh, in, in say in China. I think I think the big one of the uh, biggest contributors will be thinking about 5G. So when it comes to 5G, um, as I said before, uh, if you talk about the DAS, you have to talk about very very good systems that have been working for years, but they are difficult to upgrade. So every time you upgrade, you 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 it's a nightmare. When it comes to 5G now, uh, uh, we are we are building 5G. So we have 5G products uh, uh, and those products are quite co uh, for, uh, backward compatible. So those products that we build today on 4G are forward compatible to 5G. And the 5G product that we build are backward compatible. That's the, pretty much the same equation. But offering a system that, and then say that this is a, so by the way, these dots are 5G ready as an example. So you don't need to really to think too much about whether or not you will have a 5G uh, uh, possibility if you invest today, you don't have to think about that because you have. It's a software upgrade, okay? So when, if you think about that, I think that more and more people will start realizing that this is only possible with uh, indoor small cells. The real story for going to 5G is only possible with indoor small cells. And therefore, the dust will, uh, will, uh, will be kept on a, on a, on a like flat level, uh, for coverage uh, only in 4G. That's uh, that. I think the 5G introduction will be the 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 needle mover in a, in the US when it comes to indoor small cells. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's wait. Well, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens. And uh, we're, we're almost there. So, um, well, Marco, thanks for being with us today. It was great talking to you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Well, and thank you all for listening. Uh, this was a conversation on the CBRS uh, with uh, Marco Babovic, uh, the head of product line street and indoor uh, in the product area networks uh, at Ericsson. Thank you. Thanks so much.